Welcome, I'm Teresa Sigmund, founder of Seem Sensational and creator of the So Like a Pro training series. And in each module is a series of training videos, photographs, PDF downloads, anything and everything you need to do to get you from step one to step R for rhinestone. <laughs> This is Terry Phillips, and she is one of the So Like a Pro members. This is everything so far that I have given them, and I just, oh, this is so fantastic. So if we've got the sketch ladies, we've got the measurement cards, this is the pattern making supply list, and then it just keeps going. This is literally everything that I spent, I don't know, hundreds of hours creating all of this. And they're and very clear very clear. Oh. Do you feel like this has been what you wanted? I totally. Mean, oh, cool. Uh, the first two pages uh, it was the cost of the class. Totally. It, it was exactly what I was looking for. It had everything that I needed. It had all the answers to my questions. And I was able to take my first attempt and make a bodysuit without any problems. Truthfully. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, she's really good. <laughs> Okay, yeah. no crying. Yeah. I have with me the lovely Patsy. <laughs> she is one of the first 10 women to enroll in the Sew Like a Pro School. Now, this is the first dress that Patsy made start to finish since you've been in the school, is that That's correct? Right. Okay, now she had made several other before um, using various patterns, sort of winging it and figuring it out as you go. Okay, keep going. Okay, you did a really fabulous job with this. I'm so pleased. <laughs> Patsy has a clearly different look. Now this is her surprise with the five skirts. So this is her cha-cha skirt. Patsy's last skirt is fringe. Now she actually has two of these. She has one green one and one black. And she was like, well, which one do you want me to wear? I was like, it doesn't matter. They both look pretty awesome. I have with me Sherry, who is one of the Sew Like a Pro members. This gorgeous dress is a gown that Sherry made after she had enrolled in the Sew Like a Pro courses. Now, I won't take 100% credit for this because you were an experienced seamstress before you began, correct? Um, a little bit. I had oh. made maybe two dresses before I started the class, so not not. Oh, time. then I'll take 98% credit. <laughs> now, you've been in this school for about two years now. And as we have filmed these videos, this is, we met about an hour ago, and as we filmed three or four videos, the quality of your work from the beginning until now, which is the most recent dress, is amazing. I mean, there is no contest in how, how much better everything has sequentially gotten, and that just tickles me pink. Well, it's good to see that, that improvement too. So. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> because then it comes faster and, and everything just goes together better. So you see how it's sitting right in the crook of that? That's where you want to take your hip measurement. It's as low down as you can and that's where the leotard's going to hit. Okay, so all that makes sense. We've got bust, waist, tummy, and hips. Thanks so much for joining me again for this video where we are going to focus on the spine curvature and why it is not the same for everyone and how to know what to do for your pattern. You want to have your sketch with the measurements handy in here and fabric weights, of course, we love these. I'll turn this right around for you. And what we have here is I've got an, an extra two inch addition for the stride stitch right around the perimeter and generally it will take you from start to finish about an hour to baste everything together and then give it a quick press and fit. So the dress wants to settle right here and I didn't want it to do that of course so as I was pinning it I pulled the dress all up where I wanted it to go and then this is all nice and flat. I have also gone ahead and stitched together the ruffles to the lining layer on top. And as you can see, this once you stitch this together, it lies really, really nicely if you don't ease it in and or you don't stretch it. But you always want to have your ruffle layer on top because it's got the most bulk and it's the most likely to get 
caught up underneath here and cut off. That being said, because of the curve of this fabric, it's also very easy for this to want to sneak up in there like that. And then the blade will, as you're stitching along, the blade will come in and go snip and you'll have a big old hole in your skirt. So the next thing I would consider, since this is already cut out, is where's my armhole hitting? The armhole is hitting lower than where I would like for it to be. I want the armhole to be about an inch and a quarter, or maybe inch, well, inch and a half, maybe almost four, three to four centimeters higher. So if I pull down to tighten this leotard, it's going to be too low here. So I'm actually going to pull up. Second fitting is over. We have a lot of work to do before the third fitting. What I have done is I have pinned on, I've put the dress on, or the leotard on the dress form and gone ahead and pinned on the mesh because I want to show you what this should look like and then we're going to tear it apart and I'm going to show you how to get to this stage. It's a good idea to make sure you have plenty of bobbin when you start this because you don't want to run out after doing all this pinning. Now a lot of times the fabric wants to pull away from the zipper, so quite often I have to tug with my right hand. Before I permanent stitch and overlock, I want to do a couple of things. One, I want to go through and look at all of my seams up close and make sure that I don't have any seams that go, you know, when it's supposed to be a straight line. I go in and lay everything nice and flat and just take a look at it and say, okay, well, this one is curvy at the right place. It goes in at the waist and out at the hip and my lines are straight. Aha, see, this is, this is like piece of cake when you're on this end of the bias. And it all has to do with the bias of the fabric. And the reason we wanted to not have any points going over the seam, seams you, all, you pretty much always have to manipulate. Let's move on to the skirt because I want to show you a couple things. Now, Andrea's, I've moved the mirror out here. Andrea's been staring at it. She's gotten used to having this much leg. I think it's really sexy yet still sophisticated. And that was your pretty much goal, goal. yes? That's Excellent, goal. nicely done then. So front line we're good on. I've, the skirt is going to stitch on right here with this asymmetrical line. All right, now I wanna come in and start filling in this space so that I can figure out what the heck I'm gonna do with the sleeve because I only glued on some of the sleeve lace because I'm not really sure what I wanna do with it. This is like so fun because I just get to move things around and it's instantly gratifying. And in this video, we are going to talk about how best to plan your rhinestoning for these awesome flexible bracelets. We are tackling some of the basic rhinestoning today what we're ultimately going to create on this dress is something like this. As I go along, I want to make sure that I rhinestone evenly on both sides and do um, take a look at it from a distance to make sure that it's a straight line that I want. And I am so pleased to say <laughs> that the gown for the complete basic program is finished and I always do this. I put it on the mannequin and I will look over everything and make sure I didn't miss things. What I'm looking for on this final thing, even if I'm wearing the dress, I go in, I make sure I've snipped off threads anywhere that I've missed. And I also go in and get rid of the white chalk marks. 